course he's not like me. And, uh, and very many areas that I've observed so far, he's probably rejoicing, isn't he? <laughs> We're all on the way to heaven, though, aren't we? Yes, amen. 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 Good to see each of you here. Good to feel the presence of the Lord. Yes. My, have we been having a move of God. Yes, yes. amen. I'll tell you what, I appreciate it. He's faithful. Yes, yes. And he knows just what each of us need. Why don't we stand tonight? Amen. Let's just invite the presence of the Lord and just let God's oh, will be accomplished in each of our hearts. Yes, 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 Amen. Yes, Let's pray. Oh, Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord. We praise you.
page 120.
hospital in town. I'd rather have place else. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that he's faithful. He's a worthy and wonderful Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to come to you tonight for the offering. Say we just appreciate the way you've been giving and just uh, just always when you give, give is given to the Lord and that way everybody rejoices. I've heard some people, you know, that uh, they were afraid to give an offering because they didn't know how uh, uh, people in ministry was going to spend the money. I tell you what, those people hadn't been in the ministry. Right. I mean, this, this is, you know how they learn faith, don't you? By living it. <laughs> so just give us, give it to the Lord tonight, and God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Your Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy. Thank you for all of your blessings. You be with us tonight. Share Christ with others this week, and may we use this money in a great way for your kingdom. Oh, yes, Lord. And we give you honor and glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
can't just get in. And I know uh, the man clan works most comfortable in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. So if you just get in and let God work in your heart, oh, life, yeah. they'll be feeling good about God using yeah. them for His glory. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Let's just let the man clan come on and, and uh, labor together in the Lord. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah, glory to God. Don't you love Jesus? I could have been God yeah. the city. God give him to sit on the throne. Yes, yeah. Thank you so appreciate the Lord. Appreciate his goodness. All something about that name. Yeah. Oh, there's no other name like it. Amen. Yeah. It's at that name that all of hell trembles. Come on. It's at that name that lame are made to walk. It's at that name that sin has to leave. It's at that name that disease has to leave. Praise the Lord, man. I was feeling it so much in song service, I was throwing my drumsticks. <laughs> God is good tonight, amen. I feel the presence of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to start off with a, a fast bluegrass song that says, Just any moment, we're going to be going home. I'm looking forward to that day, aren't you? Yeah. Going home to see our Savior face to face. And by the signs of the time, I don't believe it's going to be very long. Come on, brother. We're going to see our Savior very soon, I believe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're so honored and excited to have our friends from Impact the Kingdom Ministries here tonight. Welcome. The Lord just ordained our paths to cross Sunday evening. Um, we stopped by and they we stopped by just to get a picture because we thought it was awesome the outreach they were doing and they prayed over us and it was just such a blessing. Yeah. I was crying. I told my dad afterwards. I'm like, I'm telling you, we had a divine appointment. This God. So, God was so faithful. And it's so exciting to just meet more of the family of God. It's just a little taste of what heaven's gonna be like. Amen. Amen. Talk about it. Right. You know, the more you talk about it, the more you get stirred up about it, the more you get excited, 
that you want to go. And this song just talks a little bit about heaven. I love singing it because I love talking about the place, our, the promised yeah. land, church. It's a promise. It's Come a on. It says, yeah. talks about streets of gold and Come on. gates of pearl and walls of jasper and our friends and our loved ones that's going to be there. But most of all, I'm going to see Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about yeah. that. Yeah. the man clan instrument switcheroo so I guess that's, that's what it is <laughs> Thank you, 
Oh, that'll make you want to go. Hallelujah. Yeah. I was thinking about it. Glory to God. You know what? I was, uh, years ago, I was preaching, and uh, I don't remember what I was preaching about, but I got to using an illustration of chocolate chip cookies. Uh-oh. <laughs> when I got to talking about how I made chocolate chip cookies, Nestle Toll House original recipe, yeah. right. and how that you make them, and the secret to them is you bake them just a little bit less than it calls for, and then when you pull them out, there's a nice little crunch, but then you the chocolate just kind of you know stretches yeah, yeah, yeah. and oozes, yeah. you know. And then you get a nice cold glass of chocolate milk, and then you dunk the other half in it. And so I was using that as I was preaching, and uh, and uh, I don't remember what the message was about, but I remember the illustration. Uh, but, uh, 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 but but that, the next night, as I was standing in the back reading phone, some brother came in and said, "Thanks a lot, brother." I'm like, "What?" He said, "On the way home last night, my wife made me stop and get stuff so she can go home and make chocolate chip cookies." Cause she was then another brother walked in and said, "Thanks a lot, brother. I had to go by the store and get chocolate chip cookies for my wife because she she heard about it last night." Uh, then another sister walked in with a plate of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> but, but you know, just, just talking about it made yes. folks start to want it. Come on. So just talking about it made folks start to want it. You're you know, preaching, brother man. man. You know what? I've got something better than chocolate chip cookies. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm talking about the king of beans and the water, Lord. Come on. I'm talking about the reality that one day I'm going home. That this world is not my home. I'm in just a passion. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to get on with this. Turn tonight with my library of God to the book of Psalms tonight. Yes. Psalms, the 37th chapter, the book of Psalms tonight. And, uh, so glad you're in the house of God tonight. Appreciate it again. That's what Sean and Sister Mildred being in the house of the Lord with us tonight. They were a real blessing for my children the other night. Daughter called me in tears and said, you wouldn't believe what just happened. Hey, man, you to tell me about it. I'm crying. She's crying. Oh, appreciate the Lord helping us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. We appreciate them being in the house, Lord. Psalms chapter number 37 tonight. And we begin reading verse number 23. Very familiar portion of scripture, but maybe look at it just a hair bit differently tonight. The Bible said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. All right. And he delighteth in his way. Right. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. If the Lord had heaven tonight, I want to preach to you for just a little while on this thought of, it's okay, I got you. Amen. It's okay. I got you. Let's pray. Father, we love you now. Thank you for the opportunity to give us. We got house. Our father standing down in the Holy Ghost. Don't guess what? Seven songs. Let's pray for peace. That word. Don't know what it is to hear. Hearts receive it. Our souls are exalted. Have that with it. We give praise to the Father. Honor to the Son. Well, even everybody say it. Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. Want to preach to you for just a little while? But I said, "Now this thought of it's okay. I got you." The Bible says, "Lord, uphold of Him with His hand." In other words, it's okay. It's okay. I got you. Amen. Yeah. Some years ago, we were in Indiana, and. My boy was little. I mean, he was about two years of age. And uh, I'd been out with my brother-in-law, and we came back into the home. And, uh, okay, all right. He's, uh, and we, we walked back into the home, and, uh, and uh, it's, it, you know, it was a big tile entryway. Kind of went into a great room. And, and my little boy was sitting over at the table, and he was eating. And my daughter and him were both, they were sitting there eating. And he was so little, he was still in that kind of that wobbly stage, you know. And, uh, and, and he was so young that he couldn't reach the table to eat. And so they put him on top of the chair. And then on the chair, they, they stacked um, two or three Indianapolis phone books. Some of you don't even know what a phone book is. But anyway, <laughs> when you're, you're like, what's a phone book? Well, anyway, they used to be these big old thick things. And they had yellow pages. And we had to use them. This is before we had them phones and do all that stuff. But anyway, and, uh, and so, you know, and so he's, he's all, these, you know, all those phone books. And then my boy, he's sitting on top of those phone books. Yeah. And I walked in and I looked across the room and there he was and, and he was sitting there eating. But all of a sudden he just kind of, you know, I mean, he's only about two and just kind of started having one of them wobbly moments. He started doing one of these numbers. 
And I'm like, oh no. And it's a tile floor. Everything's tile. And he starts, uh, he's bending over and there's nobody around him. And I see my, my wife had turned her back and she was in this corner and sister in law over here. And I'm standing, I'm seeing him and he's, he's, he's doing one of these and he's heading, oh, and he's falling headlong. And I know that I can't get there in time. And I have something just come over. I don't know what it was. It was just, uh, it, was, it was like I was back in the baseball days. And, and I just pretended I was diving into first base again, you know. And uh, I dove, I, I just dove across the room and landed on that tile and slid across. And, and I reached my hand out and he fell out of the chair and his head hit my hand. Oh, then he fell on my body and then he said, Give me back up there so I can eat. Hallelujah. You know, you know, the important things in life. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I, I just dove across there, reached yeah. out my hand, and, and he fell, but I, but I caught him, Pastor. And as he fell on me, I thought, You know what? It's okay, bud. I got you. Yeah. It's okay. I got you. Yeah. I, the father reached out and with his hand he grabbed, Oh, it's okay. I got you, son. Uh, tonight, can I remind you that if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ, can I just remind you tonight that we were falling headlong into hell? Uh, oh, yeah, take this off. I said we were falling headlong into hell. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is no righteous, no, not one. The soul that sinned, it shall die. You and I were falling headlong into hell. There was nothing we could do about it. Our righteousness was as filthy rags. And we were falling to our destruction, falling to an eternal death without God on our way to hell. Oh, but can I remind you that on Calvary's rugged cross, the master stretched out his hands and said it's all. Hey, I got you. Hallelujah. And when I cried out to him at an old fashioned altar and said, Lord, forgive me of my sins and be the Lord of my life, you know what he said? He said, It's okay. I got you. It's okay. I got you. Hallelujah. Now I got up from that altar, Pastor. I didn't get up religious. No. I didn't get up and say, Where do I sign the religious role? I got up and I said, I used to be dead, now I'm a living. Yeah. I used to be heavy burdened out with sin, now I'm a feeling good. Oh, why? Because he said, it's okay, I got you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. That sin was washed away. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. okay. I got you. The Bible said, Isaiah 63, 5, that there was, there was none to uphold us. There was none to uphold us. So he said, so my arm brought salvation. Yes. Yes. Standing there that day and watching my boy topple over head headlong towards that tile. There was none to uphold him. There was nobody around. So the arm of the Father, hallelujah, had to reach out. Glory to God. Come on. There was none to uphold us. But the arm of the Father reached out through the Son and said, I'll bring salvation to my kids. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, hold on, water Praise the Lord. Glory. Bible said in Psalms chapter number 40, verse number 2, that he brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, and he established my goings. I was going down, but he said, it's okay. I got you. He pulled me up out of the miry clay, and, and he set my feet on a rock. But how do you understand that when he did that, he didn't just set me up, let me try that again, set my feet on a rock and then leave me. Yeah. No, no, he said, it's okay, I got you. And he pulled me up out of the miry clay. And he set my feet on a rock. And he established my goings. Oh, but then he said this. And he said, and I'll never leave thee nor forsake you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I'll never leave thee nor forsake you. I'll stay right there beside you. I'll preach you night. I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. I told you that my God doesn't social distance. He stays right beside you. God said, I'll put you on that rock. And I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. Can I remind you? He said, it's okay. I got you. It's okay. I got you. Man. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Isaiah 41 and 13, he said this. Uh, he said, hold thy right hand. Say, I'll hold thy right hand. Say unto thee, fear not. I will help thee. In other words, it's okay. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Do you remember? I talked the other night about that wedding day. We got met wed. Uh, I grabbed that hand. And I talked about serving the Lord today. And I talked about how glad that. Oh, hallelujah. It's a glad day. Yes. It's a glad day, huh? And uh, when I grabbed that hand, and when I grabbed that hand, that was a that was a, a signal of commitment. Uh, so that was a, a signal of my commitment to her as I, I grasped her by the hand. 
I committed myself to her. I said, in sickness and health, for richer, for poor, for better, for worse, good time, bad time, raining, not raining, hot, not hot. Amen. You're stuck with me, sister man. Amen. Uh, uh, you know, mm, I said, for better, for worse, you know what? And I entered in that day. I said, I will be your protector. Amen. I will be your provider. Uh, in the physical, we know that God is that. But understand, in the, in the natural, as I took her as my wife, I said, I'll provide for you. I'll protect you. I'll be right here. You can count on me. Hallelujah. And I extended that hand. Hallelujah. One day I knelt at an old fashioned altar. He extended that hand and he picked me up. He said, It's okay. I got you. And he said, I'll be your provider. I'll be your protector. Come on. I'll be right here. I'll not leave you. Don't forsake you. It's okay. I've got you. I've got you. Hallelujah. It's okay. It's okay. I got you. So tonight, I'm just coming to preach here. Just a little bit. He said, it's okay. It's okay. I got you. Now, how do you know? Uh, God pulls us up out of the fiery clay and establishes our going, sets us on the rock. We begin to walk with him. How do you know that enemy doesn't like us on that rock? Right? Yeah. He wants to knock us off the rock. Yeah. He wants to get us back into miry clay. Yeah. Yeah. I like some folks push other folks. Well, anyway, I won't go there. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> when they're walking, well, anyway. Uh, Ask the pastor's children about that. Uh, and then he wants to push you out of your way and get you back into my clay and get you stuck again and, 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 and off of the rock. And, and so he'll do anything and everything that he can. And then one thing he does is he, he tries to bring storms our way yes. to knock us off the rock. Yes. Have you ever noticed that when folks begin to have a storm in their life, sometimes the first thing they do is quit church. Come on, brother man. The other ones that aren't here, what I said, Lord, and God knows. Come on, brother man. I'm just feeling so discouraged. I'm just going to come to church. Oh. Uh, yeah. right. This might be all the ones here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, you know, and so the enemy brings those storms uh, uh, trying to knock you off that rock, uh, trying to get you to fall, trying to get you back in the miry clay. Oh, uh, but the Bible said in Isaiah 41 and 2, he said, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my power. Yeah. Yeah. He said, it's okay. Uh, so said, so thy right hand up holdeth me. Hallelujah. You know what? When you go to those storms, I've got good news for you. It don't have to knock you off the rock. I said, it doesn't have to knock you off the rock. I said, it doesn't have to knock you off the rock. You may go through storms and troubles and trials down here, but it doesn't have to knock you off the rock. Oh, yes. I'm just going to get down where we live tonight. COVID has knocked a lot of folks off the rock. Come on, yes, man. Come on. I said COVID has knocked a lot of folks off the rock. Yeah, but I got the right. news for you. You don't have to. He said, I'll hold you by your my right hand. Come on. He said, it's okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. you. He said, that right hand. That right hand of the word of God, when we see that, always speaks of power. Yeah. Jesus said that the right hand of the Father. He said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. He always speaks of power. He said, I'll uphold you with my right hand. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Devil, you don't want nothing to do with the right hand of the Father. Huh? Amen. Don't make, me, don't make me give you the right hand. Hallelujah. Amen. My grandpa, when I was a kid, he's a logger, big old boy. He put up them, he had biggest hands. He put up them hands. He said, you want six months in the hospital, or do you want the mortuary? That <laughs> <laughs> right hand was the mortuary. <laughs> oh, he said, I'll hold you by my right hand. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, we're not talking six months in the hospital. We're talking the mortuary. He said, I got you with my right hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. I belong to him. I said, I belong to Christ. I am the bride. I said, I am the bride of Christ. the same hand that meted out the waters in the hollow thereof. That's the same hand that stretched out the stars with the span. That's the same hand that formed man from the dust of the ground. Yes. That's the same hand. I said it's the same hand that pushed back the Red Sea. They said walk across on dry ground. He said oh, I'll hold you in that hand. Yeah. I'll uphold you with, with that hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. It's that same hand. That brought down the walls of Jericho. He said, I'll hold you with that yeah. right hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna ring it here. I just won't preach up there, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Hallelujah. 
No, ring down here, just ring up there. Praise God. Do you remember 20 years ago? Well, actually, it's been almost 21. Um, Y2K? Yeah. Do you remember a couple months before Y2K? Ah, it's the end of the world. Yeah. Uh, some of you weren't even around then, I know. <laughs> some of you were babies. Some of you read about in history books. Some of you, Y2K? What's that? Anyway. Uh, you know, and right before Y2K, I mean, they're like, Oh, it's terrible. You know, the computers are going to crash. We're going to go back to 1959. And you won't be able to get gas for three months. And you won't be able to get milk. And you won't be able to get water. You won't be able to get groceries. I don't think, I, don't, I couldn't figure it out. There wasn't a run on toilet paper like this pandemic. But anyway, that was the uh, 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 I don't remember the video. Anyway, you know, I mean, oh, it was bad. I mean, I would go into churches. Church folks scared to death. And on the back of down, just smile at me, can't you just hear the kitchen? Well, anyway, uh, and, and on the back door, on the way out of churches, there'd be a list of everything you need to survive for six months. Of course, Bible was never on that list. But, uh, anyway, at that time, we didn't have our bus that we're living in now. We had a, we had a travel trailer. A Sunny Brook, Sunny Brook travel trailer, 33 and a half foot long. That's what we lived in, my wife and my children and I. And... Uh, you know, you live in a trailer. Someone said, are you stocked up? I said, I got two cans of tuna. I am stocked up. <laughs> <laughs> I was cold. <laughs> uh, and like, oh, oh, brother, man, don't you worry. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. You know what? I said, listen, uh, the same God that took care of three million people in the wilderness with no more yes. he can take care. Bring 
the storms to get you off that rock. Right. That enemy come to try to trip you up. Yes. You know what the Bible said? He's a, he's a Romans of eyes working on who made the hire. He tries to trip up the saints of God. Yes. You know, the Bible said the Lord upholdeth the righteous. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. He said, I'm going to uphold you. You can walk with me. It's all right. You, you can walk with me. It's all right. You, I've just come to tell you and said, it's okay. I got you. You remember Psalms chapter number 73, the psalmist said this. He said, my foot, my steps were almost gone. My footsteps were almost gone. My foot had not well slipped. He said, in other words, I'm going down. Uh -huh. I'm going to storm about me so bad. He said, looked about and he said, wicked men, they seem to be prospering. And they, they're not having the problems I'm having. They, you know, everything's going bad for me and everything seems to be going right with the right unrighteous. And I'm trying to live godly and everything's look going out. Well. Come on now. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Come on, real life. The devil said that to you. Don't look at me that way. I'm going to ask you. Anyway, I'm looking on it. Uh, uh, he said, you know, uh, you know, look, look at you. You're trying to live for God. This is happening. This is happening. This is happening. And they're living ungodly and wicked out there. Yeah. And they're this and they're this and yeah. that. And the man of God, he said, my foot was almost gone. My steps at night well slipped. Yeah. Uh, listen to that. Oh, uh, verse 17 said, until I went to the sanctuary. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sure glad it wasn't during COVID so he could get to the sanctuary. But anyway, that was for free. Uh, but anyway, sorry. That's what he said. But anyway, uh, until I went to the sanctuary, verse 17. He said, I got into the, the house of God. I was about to go down. And then he said in verse number 23, he said this. Oh, then he came to the realization. He said, thou hast holded me by my right hand. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I felt like I was going down. Come on. I was going down. But I realized you were saying it's okay. I Church, I'm yes. telling you, it's okay. I got you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Christmas, Easter only. <laughs> so we came to church. Christmas and Easter only. I wasn't even good at doing those two. But anyway, 18-year-old <laughs> uh, boy, just got out of high school, just starting college. On my way to the Assembly of God Church in Jackson, California, first Sunday of September, 1985. Knelt at an old-fashioned altar, gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. He cleansed and purged me, washed me, made me brand new. I got up. Woo! Yay. Telling you what, I got up. I said, I know I've been born again. I love my sister. Hallelujah. Oh, man, born again, man. Woo! Life, life and come. Hallelujah. Yay. But you know, I don't know anything about walking for God. I'm trying to walk for God, and I, I mess up. Yeah. I mess up, Pastor. And, and uh, man, I'll tell you what, it was terrible until I, I, I thought, you know, when I messed up during the week, I thought, man, I'd wait all, all the way till Sunday morning before I could finally get back to church and get back to the altar and repent. And I sure was glad I found out later that I could repent and have to get all the way to the altar and repent. I could repent right after, you know, I'm saying, oh, but anyway, I, I remember, you know, I do something, I mess up, trying to walk for God, I mess up, and man, I couldn't wait for Sunday to come around. So I get back in that church and get back in that altar and make things right and ask the Lord to help me, you know. And God just helped me. It, it began to, you know, fewer and fewer and farther in between. I'm yes, a little yes, yes. God, you know, not far. God's helping me. But I remember one Sunday morning, and I, I don't even remember what it was, but something had happened. And so I, Sunday morning, I got down that altar, and I, I was on this side of the altar, and uh, I got to pray and, and just repent and asking God to help me and, and just got prayed through about stuff. Man, I had a wonderful time. I cried as long balls, slobbered and snotted. I mean, I had a time. Yeah. And I, I was just, you know, wiping the slobber and the snot and everything, getting all ready to get up. And uh, just before I could get up, the enemy said, Don't worry, I'm going to get you. Look out. Uh oh. Yeah. And I, all of a sudden he said, You're going to live for God for 40 years and right before the rapture, I'm going to get you. You're going you're gonna to sin and miss the rapture. God, go to hell. I was like, ah! <laughs> that, man, that, uh, Pastor, I, I, just, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, God, I, I, I don't want to do that, Lord. I, I don't want to live for 40 years and mess up. I, I, God, I don't want to do that. And Lord, I know I've just messed up, and I, I, I Lord, and, and you know, man, oh, I don't know if it was that night, but it was, it was shortly. My pastor, he preached on June 24, unto him that is able to keep thee from falling. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. 
God is able to make you stand. Romans 14 tells us. Yes. I don't know, but I kind of think he said, Daniel, get ready to go on that lion's den, but it's okay. I got you. Yes. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it's okay. I got you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. And Joshua, I know you're going into the land. Joshua chapter 10, I know they're big and all this. He said, then don't fear them. Why? Right. Because right, it's okay, because... I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Well, let's come on, you too. The Bible said this. this is Isaiah chapter 43, verse number 2. He said, when you pass through the waters. Right. He didn't say yet. Yeah. He said when. Yes, sir, brother. There'll be times, thanks to the most high God, that the blessed man will pass through the valley of yes, Bosco. Yes, sir, brother. Weeping. There'll be times when storms will come to try to knock us off the rock. Right. Yeah. The times when the waters will come to try to uh, dissuade us from following the master. Every time the fiery storm yeah. will come to try us. Right. To move us off of the rock cross. Yeah. Yes. But he said, when you pass through the waters, yeah. I'll be with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And yes, let the shadow right. overflow you. Yeah. And let the fire won't burn you. It's okay. Yeah. I've got you. It's okay. California, Hallelujah. raised there. And as a kid, I, I was born and raised in the, what they call the gold country. You know, if you remember anything about the history, you know, since there was a gold rush, 1849, and gold was discovered about 17 miles from where my mom and dad live now. And um, so I was raised in that gold country era, area, California, foothills, and and. Um, when I was when I was a kid, my actually my mom and dad had a had a gold claim. And we used to go mining. And I don't know if you know anything about a dredge. We had we had a, we had a dredge and you put on a little creek and you could dredge stuff out of the bottom and it went into a sluice box and you shook the sluice box and then you got everything out of the sluice box and you gold pan that and so I, as a young kid I learned how to gold pan and run a sluice box and you know, I'm, I'm four or five years old and, and, and just a little, little creek out there and I don't know, maybe no, not, not as wide as this, maybe here, the, 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 the wall wasn't one of their big one. But I remember one day my, my dad said, uh, let's go on the other side and look at some stuff. So he just started walking. I started following, you know, dad. Well, when, you know, you're five foot ten, you know, that deep water is not a big deal. But when you're that tall, that deep water is a big deal. Yes, sir. And I'm following dad. Water's rising on my little old body. <laughs> Pretty soon he gets up about right here. You ever been in water and you're walking and all of a sudden your feet aren't hitting real good? You kind of bob a little bit and then your feet hit again. And then your feet hit again. You know, I'm about right yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, You know, I, I got scared as a kid. That, I, I, to this day, I know it wasn't, but that water looked just bad. It scared me. And I remember calling out to my dad. See, that water was no big deal to him. So about this deep. And he just reached behind me, him, and he grabbed my hand. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He said, uh, it's okay. I got you. Thank you, Lord. It's okay. I got you. Hallelujah. Yeah. No, when dad had me, it didn't matter that my feet didn't touch. It's all right, but dad had me. Yeah. Uh, it didn't matter that I didn't know what I was going to dad had me. It didn't yes. matter that dad had me. Oh, I've come to tell you, the water might be rising around you. Just grab on to his hand. He said, it's okay, I got you. It doesn't matter that your feet touch. It doesn't matter that you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is he's got you. It's okay. It's okay. I've got you. holding on to dad is I knew I was going to make it to the other side. Right. Hallelujah! Right. I said I knew I was going to make it to the other side. Right. If you hold on to it, you will make it to the other side. Yes. As we're standing across this building this evening, 
Church, I've come to tell you, the pandemic may have tried to take you down. Yeah. May have tried to overwhelm you. Enemy tried to grip your heart, your life, and your mind with fear. Yeah. Oh, grab a hold of his hand because he's saying, it's okay. I've got you. You hold on to his hand. He will bring you through. I said, he will bring you through. It's okay. I've got you. Father, we love you now. Thank you, Lord. We're just going to come across the heart. You're the heart of our souls. And all those have thy will and thy way. Spirit of the living God, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for your blessings, Lord, and your goodness. God, grab a hold of your people tonight. Encourage, strengthen, help, and bless. In the sweet name of Jesus. Jesus, hold on. Your heads about tonight. Eyes closed between you and the Master. I don't want to miss anybody here tonight. Maybe you're here tonight. You don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You're falling headlong into hell with no help in yourself, no help in this world. And I'm coming to tell you there's a Savior who died on Calvary to save you tonight. I said to save you. The Father reached out his great big hand through his son Jesus on Calvary to save you. If you're here tonight and not saved, don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. See, preacher, I want to be saved. I want to give my life to Christ. If you want me to slip your hand up quickly. Just have a back down between, between you and the Master. If you don't want to miss anybody, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, I've come to ask you tonight. You're here. Say, preacher, I felt like I've been going under. I felt like the problems, the troubles, the trials, the storms in my life have been going under. And I need the Lord to just reassure me that he's got me tonight. Hallelujah. Slip your hand up. Say, that's me. I need you not raise your hand. Say, preacher, I want to grab onto his hand a little bit tighter tonight. Oh, and just hold on. And just hold on. And just hold on. It's okay, I got you. You might be going through it tonight. He's saying it's okay, I got you. That same hand, it made everything. He's going to help you tonight. He's going to help you tonight. If it's all right, they're going to play and sing. We're going to open these altars. Invite those of you that raise your hand, those of you that will. Let's come gather around these altars. Find us a place to pray. Let's let God help us tonight. Let's let God help us tonight. 